Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll do aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis, a catabolic reaction that breaks down carbohydrates into glucose. Then this glucose is the substrate for the the starting substrate for glycolysis. Now it takes place in the cytosol of the mitochondria. These complex macromolecules are broken down from like proteins to amino acids, carbohydrates to monosaccharides, fats to cholesterol and fatty acids in order to yield acetyl coenzyme A. And this is important because the acetyl coenzyme A leads to the citric acid cycle, which is also known as the Krebs cycle, which is the main cycle needed for um, gaining ATP, which yields us carbon dioxide and water. Pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis in cells with mitochondria and an adequate supply of oxygen. So in aerobic glycolysis, pyruvate is the end product. And in anaerobic glycolysis, uh, pyruvate is reduced to lactate as NADH is oxidized to NAD. Now this conversion of glucose to lactate is called anaerobic glycolysis because it can occur without the participation of oxygen. Anaerobic glycolysis, it allows the production of ATP in tissues that lack mitochondria, for example, red blood cells, or in cells deprived of sufficient oxygen. So when we are running, let's say, and um, exhausted have our oxygen sources, then our body starts anaerobic glycolysis to supply our muscles, our body uh, with a bit of energy to keep going. Lactate is formed by the action of the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. It is the final product of the anaerobic glycolysis, as I mentioned earlier. Elevated la concentrations of lactate in the plasma is termed lactic acidosis. And the excess oxygen, which is required to recover from a period when the availability of oxygen has been inadequate, is termed the oxygen debt. What is important um, in biochemistry mainly is the energy yield. So you need to know that two molecules of ATP are generated for each molecule of glucose converted to two molecules of lactate. Here you can see the reaction of pyruvate going into lactate by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase using NADH. Moving on to aerobic, um, obviously I told you it's called aerobic because oxygen is required to reoxidize the NADH formed during the oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate in the chain reaction. And I'll tell you later on, oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate by pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, which I will speak about in my next video. It irreversibly converts it to acetyl coenzyme A, which is the major fuel for the citric acid cycle, as I mentioned earlier. So this is why aerobic is important, because uh, the pyruvate is, undergoes oxidative decarboxylation, which yields acetyl coenzyme A, which is what we need from glucose. Okay, now the main part, the energy yield. So eight molecules of ATP two from glycolysis, which we already said from anaerobic, and six from the two molecules of NADH that are produced when we have aerobic glycolysis. In one of my last videos, I mentioned that one molecule of NADH can give you 2.5, so let's say almost three ATPs. So two molecules will give us six. Okay, now here's the mnemonic for the reaction. Good friends get beautiful presents packaged. Now, the twos are there for you to remember that friends, presents, and packaged, the letters have to be repeated. So we have two Fs, two Ps, and another two Ps. So this is the reaction. We will start with glucose 6-phosphate because we know that glucose is our substrate. So good for glucose. Friends, the first F for fructose 6-phosphate. The second F for fructose 1,6-bis phosphate. Get is for glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Beautiful is for 1,3-bis phosphoglycerate. 
presents. The first P is for 3 phosphoglycerate, second P for 2 phosphoglycerate, packaged one is phosphoenol pyruvate, and finally we know the last P is for pyruvate. Now I want you to remember 1, 3, 6 and 9. You can take it as the multiples of 3 in steps 1 and 3. You have ATP consumption. In steps 6 and 9, you have ATP production. So this is for the energy yield. And in the steps that you have ATP production, you have two moles of ATP. Here you can see that in steps 1 and 3, ATP is being consumed. And in steps 6 and 9, here it says 7 and 10 because they have included an intermediate step. Step number four in this diagram is the intermediate step. And um, yeah, and what you need to know is that in step six in this diagram, but otherwise in step five, when glycerol 3 phosphate is being um, converted to 1 3 bis phosphoglycerate, then there is um, you gain NADH. All right, let's start with the reaction now. The first enzyme is glucokinase and it catalyzes the reaction of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. The second enzyme is phosphoglucose isomerase. Why? Because glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate are isomers and it catalyzes the conversion of glucose into fructose 6-phosphate. The third enzyme is phosphofructokinase 1. So it catalyzes fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The fourth enzyme is aldolase. Now aldolase helps with the conversion of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, which is a very important product. Now, triose phosphate isomerase is an enzyme that converts dihydroxyacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And why is this important? It's because this is a side reaction that is also important in helping to increase the concentration of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The next enzyme is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or simply G3P dehydrogenase. So it helps convert, catalyzes glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate into 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. The next enzyme is phosphoglycerate kinase, which catalyzes 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate into 3-phosphoglycerate. Just remove the 1 and the bis. On to the next enzyme, phosphoglycerate mutase catalyzes 3-phosphoglycerate into 2-phosphoglycerate, just a change in numbers. Our next enzyme is enolase. Enolase converts 2-phosphoglycerate into phosphoenol pyruvate, so enol pyruvate, so enolase. And the last enzyme is pyruvate kinase, which leads to a final product from phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate, just scratch out phospho and in all. If it is aerobic, it stops here. If anaerobic, it converts to lactate with lactate dehydrogenase. I hope it is clear. Now we'll move on to shuttles. So we have two types of shuttles. One is glycerophosphate shuttle and one is malate shuttle. So it's important for you to know these shuttles because glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. Now from the cytosol, they need to go into the mitochondrial membrane for oxidative dephosphorylation, right? If you remember the electron transfer chain, NADH and FADH need to go into the inner mitochondrial membrane. So these shuttles help with that. The function of this shuttle is to take the NADH from the conversion of dihydroxyacetone phosphate into glycerol phosphate into the mitochondria where the mitochondrial glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase converts it into 1-FAD and FADH2. 
The function of malate aspartate shuttle is that aspartate in the cytoplasm and the cytosol is converted to oxaloacetate by transaminase. Now, this oxaloacetate cannot enter into the mitochondrial membrane. So, malate dehydrogenase converts it into malate using NADH and is transported into the mitochondria where it converts back into oxaloacetate using the dehydrogenase. So, malate uh, helps to transport oxaloacetate into the membrane and you doing that it also takes an NADH. Now let's speak about the differences between both the shuttles. So malate it regenerates NADH inside the mitochondrial matrix so it is capable of maximizing the number of ATPs produced in glycolysis because one NADH can give us three ATPs. But glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle, it reduces FAD to produce FADH. If you remember, it takes NADH from the reaction out in the cytosol, but in the mitochondria, it reduces the FAD to produce FADH2, and the hence it is only capable of generating two ATPs per NADH generated in glycolysis instead of the 3 and that is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.